Hi everyone, I am so excited today because I am joined by Peter Shulman who is the founder of the hugely popular Goodness Me Box. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for sparing a bit of your time and talking to me today. My pleasure, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Me too, we're going to have a good combo. <laughs> so just to start, um, can you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and I guess what you do and what your role in, um, in Amongst Goodness Me Box is all about? Yeah, sure. So do you want me to take everyone back to the beginning, how it started? Let's just do it. Goodness Box? Yeah, from the <laughs> beginning. Um, so I guess my journey before I started the business um, began when I um, got quite sick at age 21 and the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, but I just had a really poor immune system, headache, fatigue, swollen glands, achy limbs, like you name it. I just felt completely flared up. I was in bed for three months, still with no answers. And then I eventually started my role at a PR company in the health and wellness space. I'd just finished university. So looking back now, I don't know how I got out of bed, but I did it. But for three years, I'd go to work, I was exhausted, and the weekends I would just rest. Like, And it just became my normal. You forget what it's like to jump out of bed with full energy and, um, you know, you think the tiredness and the dull headaches, et cetera, like that's, that's just how my body was. And um, finally, it was in the third year, was the ninth time I'd been to my GP with a cold. So it was pretty much every single month. And he wanted to give me another antibiotic. And I turned to him and said, there must be something more going on here. Please, will you send me to a specialist? And I was finally diagnosed with an autoimmune condition. So the doctor explained to me, my body doesn't create enough antibodies to fight off viruses or bacteria, and hence why I was getting sick all the time. And he point blank said to me, there was nothing I could do. I just had a premature aging immune system and I would just need to be in hospital once a month to get these protein antibody transfusions to keep my energy levels up. And I asked the doctor, okay, well, how long do I have to do this for? And he said, well, you, you need to do this for the rest of your life. And I just thought that was crazy. I was 24 and I didn't want to be in and out of hospital. And then he also told me what I had was closely related to some pretty serious um, chronic disease as well, which I found quite shocking. Um, so I walked out of there and decided to not do that and to rather first try seek help from an integrative doctor. So for those people out there who don't know what an integrative doctor is, they look at the body as a whole. So um, they will also look at your stress, your sleep, your lifestyle, your hormones, your exercise, how all of that plays into your body as well. And I was lucky enough to find someone who um, gave me a bit of hope, I'd say. And the first thing she said was just to simply reduce the inflammation in my body and cut out the artificial and processed foods from my diet. And with that, um, I took that on board and really started diligently listening to what she was saying because I was just so desperate to feel better by that point. And um, to do so, I started going to the supermarkets and trying to find food just made with natural ingredients for when I was buying packaged food. Obviously, fresh is always best, but... We do live in a world of convenience as well these days. And I was really struggling to find that. And that's when I started wandering into health food stores and discovering all these amazing health food products in the market. And I kept thinking, why aren't these more widely available? Why aren't they in the supermarkets? Mm -hmm. And uh, a business idea, I guess, began to form at that point. And it was that point within three months, I noticed at least started I'm um, seeing my energy levels increase. My test results came back a bit more positive. Um, and I started working on a business idea to get other people excited about health food products at that mm -hmm. stage. And um, I guess to cut things a bit shorter, um, by the six month mark, um, I got tests again, two out of my three antibody levels were back into normal range. The doctors were astounded. They couldn't believe, you know, I'd done it all through natural means of looking after my body. And um, I decided to go on a five-day hike overseas, which I, I couldn't do exercise pretty much for the past three years, so that was huge for me. And I thought, if I'm still excited about this business idea when I get back, I'm going to quit my job and just give it a crack. Mm, that's crazy. And you, you telling that story, 
it just really highlights to me. I feel like every woman herself or has a friend who are, you know, like struggling in some way with some kind of health condition or, you know, they're struggling with their energy levels or there's, there's kind of something going on with at least someone that you know. And it's like you put so much trust into your doctors and assume that all the antibiotics um, and things that they're giving you is what's working. And it's just like incredible to me that, you know, kind of going back to a more natural based diet and, and supplements and, and really just coming back to nature can sometimes be just as beneficial perhaps as if you followed that doctor's path as well. Absolutely. And it's so easy to take your doctor's word as gospel like you do. And it's difficult to question them or to yeah. um, even ask questions as well um, about what they're saying to you. I think what we don't realise these days is over the years, the big food industry has started adding more and more artificial ingredients in our food. So you And our bodies find them very difficult to digest and to tolerate and it causes inflammation and they say all you know, the source of all disease starts with inflammation. So um, you've just got to wonder what is that doing when you're ingesting that every single day, meal after meal, and we do it now without even realising. Yeah. I mean, I did, well, I did for years. Yeah, and that's the thing as well. Like, it's almost like this food industry is moving so fast that, you know, the medicine can't keep up with it. Old, you know, old ways... Uh, are not the same anymore and these food companies are constantly putting more and more stuff in like if you look at the packet of a you know a label there's so much ingredients and you don't even know well I personally wouldn't know 90% of the stuff that's in a packet you know and it's just really um, concerning exactly what are we putting into our bodies now and are we actually equipped medically to understand where that's taking our bodies yeah, absolutely. Like I would drink soft drinks every single day and I turned around the packaging. I thought, you know, I started reading everything that I was eating and I read high fructose corn syrup, aspartame and phosphoric acid. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I didn't even know what any of that was. <laughs> and you're putting that every single day in your body. So um, it must be doing something. If, you know, the food that you do ingest, your body does turn into fuel. So it makes sense to be putting good, nourishing whole foods that haven't been made in a, in a lab, essentially. Yeah. And how did it feel as a young person, you know, in your early 20s, looking towards your future and being like, I don't know, like, what my future holds. I mean, this sickness is defining who I am. Was that a scary thought trying to think into the future when you felt so sick? Yeah, I definitely felt defined by it. However, I think what was interesting is how it became my normal, which I mentioned. And I think so many of us do accept that that dull headache or waking up in the morning always tired or going through the day without energy, it just becomes, you, you become so used to it. And I, that's why for a period I stopped going to doctors because I was going through this period where I was incredibly frustrated, not getting any answers. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's just me, mm. you know? So, um, but I think the, the plus side of it is you don't have to accept that that is how your body is and you can feel better and there are solutions out there to yeah. do so a lot of the time. Yeah, you're hitting me right in the nail in the head here with me. I am so bad for that. Like my energy levels are so low and it's just like a joke now. It's just like, oh, Casey just sleeps all the time. Like it's just a funny thing but it is important you know if you are if something doesn't seem right to maybe look a little bit deeper and perhaps you know like a lot of things I'm realizing this year is like you can listen to your doctor or maybe just do a little bit more research on your own and speak to people who are like you and, and are suffering the same symptoms and perhaps you can find a link through others I'm not saying that everything you read online is true but perhaps educating yourself a little bit more outside of perhaps what your doctors are saying might be able to help you um, get to the root of the issue. Yeah, exactly. And we've got access to so many resources now. And I did, I forgot to mention that I did also go and do a lot of my own research after seeing that first integrative doctor because I got so excited. So I started reading a whole lot of books, especially on gut health as well, because that impacts your entire body. So mm -hmm. I love it. So can you tell me a little bit about um, Goodness Me Box itself, um, what it is and how does it actually work for the customer? Yeah, sure. So I came up with this idea that I wanted to surprise people every single month with up to 10 health food products 
um, or samples that they received at their doorstep. And the idea was to recreate this experience that I was having when I was discovering all these products, how excited I was that I didn't have to compromise on taste, that health food could be delicious. And particularly as well, when you're looking for products with natural ingredients, it's really difficult to navigate at the supermarket. And I know for mums in particular as well, that can be quite a, a pain point, particularly when they become conscious for their children's health. Mm. Um, so it was a way of getting health food products in front of people that wasn't confronting or overwhelming or intimidating. I didn't want it to be about counting calories or dieting. It's just about eating food made from real food. Mm -hmm. And on the flip side for the brands, um, because I was working in PR, I knew what I was good at was promotion. And I always say to find something that you're passionate about and something that you're good at. So I love servicing clients. I love getting brands out there. Um, I knew the media quite well to get the story out there. So for us, we're essentially a marketing service for the brands that we work with to get them into the hands of a very targeted audience. And then we also get to provide them with um, customer feedback and data to help them stay on the shelves of the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. um, I was a big believer, and I still am at the time, that if we want to change how the retailer shelves are stocked, if we want to change the products that big food are making, that we need to change it um, through consumer demand. And that means creating a community around that cause. And it's really up to us to make that change because they do listen eventually. And um, we do have a lot of impact and power from that point of view. And do you feel like um, more over time, especially now, people are moving more towards that health conscious lifestyle? People are starting to wake up to the effects like we were talking about before, you know, the effects of these bad processed foods. Um, do you feel like the trend is kind of moving towards, you know, the more healthier um, whole foods? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, the data shows it and I know that that's happening when I see that. But what's been really interesting is the shift when I was working in PR, you would, um, and this was like from eight or nine years ago, you'd pitch a story to the media about, um, gut health and they were really resistant and they thought it was quite alternative and you know I saw quite a distinct shift where they started accepting stories more like that and the benefits of turmeric for Alzheimer's and studies on cancer for it etc so um, there's definitely been a shift and wellness has become aspirational mm -hmm. um, the industry has become a lot more trendy these days which is great um, but um, I think slowly, slowly it's happening, but the health industry is still very much in its infancy. But mm. I see that only as a positive because there's so much opportunity to grow and for more people to, to start transitioning. And the more demand there is for foods out there as well, the, the more accessible and the cheaper they'll become. So um, I think that's something else that, um, you know, needs to be worked on mm. in the industry. Yeah, I was going to ask you, um, you know, how how do you stand out, I guess, in a world where quite a lot of people are wellness bloggers and, and they want to promote that wellness lifestyle when they're perhaps maybe not as educated as someone or a brand like yours. Um, I guess, like you said, overall, it's still pushing people in the right direction. Um, but it's really important that it's also, I guess, like factually correct information too. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, we have a whole team of health practitioners behind us, which I think is key. So you need to be putting out information. That's 100% correct. Um, so I guess social media is now really saturated in the market. And it's a great way to get out there because it's cost effective as well. Mm -hmm. um, but to stand out today, something that we've done is that we've always stuck by our values and had a really strong stance on that. And what you'll find is when your business or your brand has integrity, um, a lot of people end up wanting to partner with you because of that. So don't be afraid to also go niche and know who your customer is and speak to them specifically. A lot of the time you launch business and you think that you need to be everything to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but in fact, it's actually quite the opposite. And there's um, so much upside in going niche and speaking to that customer and cultivating a community amongst them because there's really nothing more powerful than word of mouth mm. out there. And um, 
from a marketing point of view, you want people to be talking about you and recommending your products. So, um, yeah, starting with that smaller community is okay and, and definitely the right thing to do. Mm. And do you attribute, I guess, a lot of your online success? I mean, you're nearly at 100,000 followers, which is incredible. Um, do you attribute a lot of that social media success to those small communities who kind of spread the word for you? Yeah, definitely. Um, so in the beginning, marketing has changed quite a lot. So in the beginning, when we launched Goodness Me Box, I should say when the company launched, I was just sitting in my apartment. I'd spent a lot of time developing the strategy to get out there. And I was, I was 24 at the time. I was extremely naive. I had no idea actually what it took to grow a business, nor did I have any experience. And um, what I was good at at the time was PR, but I also noticed a distinct shift where a lot of influencers were becoming a lot more powerful than a traditional editor or magazine or newspaper, etc. Um, I knew that I had to grow a database because without um, a community, we wouldn't have brands who wanted to work with us. And um, I'd seen a great referral program out there. So those were really my three trigger points and, and seeding my story throughout media, doing PR for myself, which can be a really hard thing, pitching yourself as well. So I encourage a lot of business owners out there to put themselves out there. I'm actually naturally quite an introverted, shy person, but when it comes to your business, you've just, you've got to do what you've got to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I planned all of that. We launched, I opened the website and I started getting all these followers coming through from Instagram and at the same time, the sales started dinging. So from day one, we started having sales come through. The Instagram didn't stop for 10 full days, nonstop, and had to mm -hmm. cut off sales after a few days so we had a really crazy strong start and we sold out for six months consecutively wow. so much to the point that we started pre-selling boxes you know two three months in advance which came back to bite me like any startup you always run into tech issues along the way and that was the other thing I had no idea that I was essentially um, you know like a, a tech entrepreneur and getting into the industry um, that way. So um, while the business, you know, still survived through a difficult period, we did go through that. And I think that's important to mention that it's not all easy, um, you know, from beginning to end as well. But we did have, we did have a, an amazing start that was completely unexpected for the business. Um, but going back to your initial question about marketing and what we attribute the success to. Um, those factors, the PR, working with media, influencers, the referral program and focusing on growing our database was really helpful. But these days, marketing has changed a lot and you really need an integrative marketing approach where you are touching so many more points with the consumer. Mm -hmm. um, back then, they used to say, you know, focus on three three or four things that you're really good at when it comes to marketing but these days I think um you need you need to be everywhere yeah people get lost I mean they'll hear your name once and then um literally hear another name and they forget about you like you've really got to you know find them on Instagram and then when they're over on Facebook you need to be popping up there like it needs to be constantly reiterated in people's brains because I feel like we move on so quickly <laughs> That's it. We live in such a fast paced world. Um, I do recommend, you know, to spend most of, we spend most of our budget, I'd say it depends what business you are, but on digital, mm -hmm. um, because that's where things are at the moment. But um, you do need so many more touch points. So I heard, you know, someone needs to see your brand or your product 16 times, whereas 20 years ago, it used to be four times. Wow. So that's, that's a lot of touch points before yeah. you convince someone to actually try your, your service or your product. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> um, so what was the inspiration, I guess, behind a monthly um, subscription? What kind of other benefits for, you know, a month to month kind of package for someone? Yeah, I guess that element of surprise and delight mm -hmm. was something really important to us. And I think today, 
we everything is accessible to us today. Back in the day, it used to be exciting to go overseas to because you could go to Zara and you could go to Sephora. And these days, you can just order everything online. But what someone can't compete with you on is the experience. And so the experience was always something that was at the forefront for me. And that experience of that anticipation, waiting for it to arrive every month generates this excitement. So when it does come, there is this unboxing moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something really evident that we've seen, particularly on social media. A lot of our customers and our community will um, show videos of them opening the box and sharing that experience, which is great because that essentially does the marketing for us. And if you can get your customers to share that without you even having to ask, mm. that's, that's absolute gold when that happens. Um, so that experience from a business point of view, um, it's really helpful with cash flow as well. Um, you know, they always say cash is king and it's just, it's so important to be across your finances and your funds because I think a lot of people get caught up in the idea of being a startup and running a business, but like you have to be across the finances and the number one rule is just do not run out of money. And it's so simple, but I think a lot of businesses lose sight of that. And, and that's a lesson I've actually learned the hard way throughout throughout the journey as well yeah yeah i know so many people that struggle with the cash flow like they love the idea generation and and really the the business side behind it but it, when it, even me like i struggle still like as a i guess um a service-based business to to physically ask for money it feels like you know like uh salesy and whatever but it's like if you want to see whatever you're doing progress into the future, you obviously have to make sure that your finances are on point and you keep that cash flow on point as well. Otherwise, you've got nothing, nothing to take into the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you essentially have a duty if you want to provide that service to people and provide a good service. It does require money to do that mm -hmm. as well. So um, it can be really easy to lose sight of that and particularly when it's not your strength my mm -hmm. strength is marketing and partnerships and it's important to know what you're good at and what you're not but then find the people around you that can help you yeah. to um, to do the things that you might not love as much yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's really good advice. Um, and I guess you were probably one of the first people to kind of come out with this monthly subscription model. It's a bit more popular now. Um, but how was, how did people respond to that in the beginning? I think people would have loved it because they felt like they were doing something healthy for themselves. Like they were doing something good and they were doing it repetitively on a monthly basis. And I feel like that's something that people can really get behind. Like I'm doing something good for myself every single month. Yeah, there's definitely a few reasons that people sign up, which is what we find really interesting. So some people it is just to treat themselves and to do something good for themselves and it's for motivation. Um, but for others, we find with like a lot of the mums, they're interested in healthy snacks and ingredients and cooking ideas for their kids because that becomes important. And for others, they're just completely lost at the supermarket. Um, these companies spend so much money trying to confuse us and trying to showcase their products as healthy on the front of the packaging when in fact they're not. So we really try and empower our community to understand how to read food labels. And it's quite simple because for us, it's about just read the ingredients. You do not need to be a mathematician mm -hmm. to be healthy. So we want to take the stress out of food and a lot of people as well do it because they want to enter this whole food lifestyle and they want to stop dieting and they want to stop calorie counting. So it gives them this freedom around food. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And how do you pick um, the products each month and do they change every month? Yeah, so every month it's a surprise. Um, we do it a few ways. So firstly, we've got a fantastic team of healthcare practitioners where we run past every single product to make sure that the ingredients are okay. And um, we look at what are the trends out there. Um, we want the experience to be something new, perhaps, that you haven't discovered or something that just tastes 
remarkable that you couldn't imagine could actually be healthy as well. I think people think that they have to miss out on all those foods that they love when they transition to a whole food lifestyle. Um, and we're fortunate enough that a lot of the brands out there do know about Goodness Me Box. So when they launch to market, whether it's a brand new company or it's an established company releasing a new product, a lot of it is incoming and they approach us as well. So we get to see almost everything first and um, understand what our community is going to love or really want to try. Mm. And it gives, I guess that range of selection really gives you the opportunity to be picky as well and, and give um, your customers the best of the best, you know, with all of those options coming in, you can really um, put to the forefront exactly what you know your customer is going to love. Yeah, that's it. And um, I guess that's also where the data comes in, where it's really important to listen to our customer and see that feedback and see what they're liking and what they're not. And for other businesses out there who aren't necessarily collecting data, but social media is such a great platform to do that. And we used it particularly in the beginning. Um, so much in those first six months to get feedback and to bring the customer on the journey of any kind of product development that we were doing as well to ask them what they want to see and what they don't want to see mm -hmm. because at the end of the day you you want to make sure you're still serving them yeah. um, and it can be easy to forget that as well because you get all these new ideas in your head and you think but does the customer actually really want that we think it's cool but are we too much in the business and, and in the products yeah. And social media is such a good tool for that as well. Like you can literally just put up a poll on your Instagram stories or something like it doesn't have to be anything complicated or this massive data collecting um, process. If you just want a straight up answer, like, do you prefer this product or that product? Like you have the capability to literally just ask that on your Instagram stories. Yeah, that's it. And there's also research out there that when a customer or someone in your community has input about your product or gives a review, they feel closer affiliation to the brand. So I would encourage everyone to do that. And that was something also when I launched the business, I actually pre-launched the social media channels and took everyone on the journey of creating the business and putting everything together and getting opinions and it creates that excitement and anticipation for when you do launch yeah I love that um so you said you have a um background in PR is that what you um did you go to university for that yeah so I studied communications yeah. um and then I just went straight into PR the funny thing was a lot of people do you know their first career they don't fall in love with and I was lucky enough that I actually did love the industry mm -hmm. um, so I never went and started a business because I was bored I wasn't enjoying myself or anything I think I just thought well I, if it doesn't work out I've lost all my savings which is the worst thing but mm -hmm. I will just go back and get another job and I think being um, younger with no responsibility no you know really serious responsibilities made it a lot easier as well and um that I was quite naive, I guess, yes. so it was always helpful. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So many things that I do, people are like, how did you start that? How did you get started? And a lot of the time it's like pure naivety, honestly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just jump in head first so. yeah <laughs> um so what advice would you give um maybe one of the listeners who really want to start on their business journey but they don't necessarily have the experience um so I guess my my first piece of advice would be to just start mm -hmm. I've spoken to so many people who have spent years putting together their strategy and their business idea. And by the time you do that, the industry has moved on the strategy. You know, a lot of the time it's just fear that holds us back as well. So just jump in and take everyone on the process with you, even if you're not ready to actually open the doors of your website. Um, and the other thing is, I mentioned this earlier, but make sure it's something you're passionate about and, and something you're good at as well. You don't have to be good at everything in the business, but play your business to your strengths mm -hmm. and use that as what your key is to um, move the business forward in the first place. So for example, what I was good at was promotion and partnerships and to get the first few brands in the box, I had to establish partnerships with them and to get the word out there, I had to you know, know what I was doing in terms of promotion. Um, 
the passionate part is super important because when you go through those really difficult and those challenging times, that's when you go back to your why. Why did I start this business? And what am I doing this for? And without that, I imagine it can be very difficult to, to get through those tough times because it happens with all new businesses. It's never smooth sailing throughout the whole process. Yeah. And I think that also goes back to what you were saying about action as well. I feel like we get it in our minds exactly what this business is going to look like. And we get so caught up in, in where it'll be in a year or five years time. Um, but sometimes by taking that action and just kind of rolling with the punches and just accepting that it's going to be a bit of a, a crazy journey, but you're willing to go on the ride. Um, you're, for, you're going to get there eventually, but if you, you know, set this massive standard and, and you don't accept anything until you kind of reach that standard, you're never going to take the leap, if that makes sense. Yes, exactly. You've got to do it one step at a time. And um, the other thing that um, you made me think of as well is to really know your customer when you start. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important to almost work backwards from who am I speaking to and who's my customer and almost to develop the product from there. It definitely helps when you are the target market, which was the case for me in the beginning. Um, and I've heard that a lot as well, that um, you have to know exactly who you're speaking to. Mm, I love that. Um, so just to start to wrap it up, um, what are the future plans for yourself and goodness me box? So I think over the years, I very easily get distracted by all the shiny new things and new ideas. So um, the team and I always laugh because we say the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. We just want to stay on track. So for us, our key is we just want to keep growing the community and our subscription boxes. We have released our um, kids box, which is monthly, which I'm so excited about because that's now an experience for mum and their, their child or their children to experience together and get excited about health foods from a young age yeah. um, and that really ties back to our mission where we always want to make a profound difference to people's health by changing their food choices and the best way to do that is is from kids when they're young yeah. um, and we also have a beauty box but then the other thing that we do is our whole food market events and that's a really huge part of the business it's something we do to also take the business out of the digital space and get to meet our community and customers so we have these big events where all the brands we work with have stalls and we have celebrity cooking demonstrations and healthy dinner served and it's just a really fun night celebrating whole food. So that's something that we want to continue um, doing and continue to grow. So our next event for that is on June 19th, which we're very busy preparing for at the moment. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and how is your health now? Like coming all this, all this way after all these years, how, how are you feeling now? Yeah. So, I mean, compared to how I used to be, my health is in such a great position. Um, I think currently there is no cure for autoimmune conditions. So it is something that you always have to consistently manage. So every now and then I might get, now and again, I might get a, a flare up, but they're really not very frequent. And I haven't been to the doctor for cold or flu in honestly the last two years. Mm -hmm. So I would say things are pretty good. And for me, you know, what motivates me in terms of eating healthy or exercise always goes back to just feeling good and having that full energy. Mm. And um, you really do have a good mind shift when you're doing it for reasons like that, rather than I'm exercising because I want to counter what I ate last night or, um, you know, for any, for any of those reasons that so many of us so often, you know, can find ourselves doing so. Um, yeah, my health is in a good position, but um, it always requires management. And I think you can always feel better at something, always, always that I'm working on to improve all the time. And that's part of the fun of it as well. Yeah, definitely. I feel like when you kind of take the aesthetic out of it um, and really focus on like, why do I want to make myself feel good? And, and what's the best thing I can do for my future? I think that makes it a lot easier to stick to rather than like, I want to look like, x in six months like it, it's way harder to stick to that yeah absolutely and also um oh, it's it's not a 
fun and motivating way to go about it. I think everything, um, habit becomes so important when it comes to your health mm -hmm. and you need to find something that's sustainable. And that's why we all, we always think in the office, you know, we don't want to be about dieting and, um, you know, any of those messages, it needs to be a sustainable, a sustainable lifestyle. Mm. Oh, I love it. Such a good message. <laughs> um, so where can um, the listeners go to buy one of your amazing boxes and get behind the goodness me lifestyle? Thank you. Um, so our website is goodnessmebox.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can also find us on Instagram, which is just at goodnessmebox. And um, those are probably the two best places or Facebook. We've got a really fantastic Facebook group, which we've recently launched called Goodness Me Community. And it's just a place to ask everyone questions about products when you're shopping at the supermarket, if you're unsure if they're healthy or not, or you're having difficulty reading the label and to share whole food recipes or great whole food cafe that you've found just anything to do to help you with that lifestyle. And we also have health practitioners available in the group to, to help with questions. So I um, would encourage everyone to join there. It's a really beautiful community in there. That's so good. Like that, that is such little things, but such big struggles for a lot of people. And the ability to just like whip out your phone and ask a question is that's like amazing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We just want we just want to make it easy and and fun as well. I think that's what it needs to be all about as well. We yeah. want it to be convenient and and exciting when you're following this lifestyle. Amazing. All righty. Well, just my last question. Uh, what advice would you give to your younger self? To my younger self, um, I think the first thing that comes to mind is to take risks but always protect, protect the downside. And that was something I actually read in Richard Branson's, one of his books. But I thought, and this was after I hadn't done that in the scenario <laughs> in business. Um, and I thought, I'm always going to remember that because we took a huge risk doing something and it cost us a ton of money and you've just got to be so careful. So um, I think that's a huge lesson that mm -hmm. I've learned. Um, throughout my journey in business. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Peter. You've like literally been so helpful on the business side as well as kind of that mindset um, and growth side as well. So I think the listeners are just gonna absolutely love you and I'm sure they'll be snatching up all your boxes. We'll probably sell you out this month. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. It's been so much fun. Thank you. I really do appreciate it.